Okay, well, thank you, Yvonne, for um, that lovely introduction and for helping me today with the technical problems or issues, or actually, they were mostly issues that I thought I might have, which didn't end up having. Am I muted? No. Okay. Um, and I have to say thank you to my husband, who I think has joined this meeting, because he really helped me a lot with editing and suggestions because he's been doing video presentations for his whole career whereas this is the first one I've ever done so <laughs> and he did the videography and he's probably going to heckle me if he's in this meeting so <laughs> but I better say thank you first. <laughs> so I called it my sweet potato experience and it has been a very interesting experience. Um, I Hang on a second, I'm just going to reduce some of these photos. Okay, here we go. So, uh, yeah, I actually, this is only the second year I've grown sweet potatoes. Last year, it was by accident. So what happened is for years, we've been having our garden on our deck where there's nice sun and it's easy to water, mainly because down on the garden beds, things grew and it got shaded over and we have a lot more pesky pests down there in the garden beds. And so we've been for years just planting um, intermixed vegetables, tomatoes. Here's some of the, on the left-hand slide is some of the things that I harvested last year, one day. Some eggplant, tomatoes, peppers, chard. Um, and also we'd put flowers in. And so that was it just a really nice way of um, integrating your food and your flowers and having them close. And so anyway, last year I was organizing the containers and I realized I need something to drip over the sides, you know, like you do with sweet potato vines, but I didn't have any. I mean, there was decorative ones. So I went down to my favorite little shop where you can buy everything. It's called Ayers Hardware in Arlington. I don't know if anyone's been there, but it's a great shop. Anyway, First time I couldn't find something I needed. They did, had no sweet potato vines, decorative ones. So they did have the real thing. They had, you know, those little plastic four packs with the actual slips in it already done for me. So it was easy. And uh, all they did was I brought them home and wherever I could find room, I just stuck them in and um, thought, well, I'll get vines anyway, and maybe, who knows, you might even get a couple of little sweet potatoes when we, when we dig these up in the fall. So they did their job. They, the vines grew beautifully and decoratively. Then it came time to clean up the pots last year, and I was taking them all, you know, when you take out all your flowers and your old finished tomatoes and things, and I thought, Oh, well, maybe. I didn't expect a lot because, you know, there wasn't that much room. And here's what I got. The slide on the left is just part of the harvest that I got. You can see that they grew into whatever space they could find and they were growing around to fit the shape of the pot. And, but they were pretty good size and it was just so exciting to be able to not only have the beautiful container all year, all summer long, and then to be able to get food from it um, in the fall. So this year, now, this year has been a lot different from any other years. <laughs> um, it was really hard to get seed. I didn't feel comfortable going out, going to stores and seeing if I could find seedlings. Um, but I had bought a packet of, I guess you call them seed, Pota seed sweet potatoes um, from Home Depot. They had some potatoes and some sweet potatoes, so I, I picked them up. And then it came time to start thinking about sprouting them, which I'd never done before. So I read the instructions and I tried everything. I put them in warm spots and I put them, somebody said put them in wet sand and then put them in a warm spot. So I had them for weeks and weeks and weeks. We had bright sun shining through the skylights. So I had them in there in, in the early spring and just tiny little eyes and tiny little sprouts, but nothing to 
you know, they were, it wasn't coming, it wasn't happening quickly. Meanwhile, I had a, uh, bought one from the supermarket in the fruit bowl and I looked at it and it was growing these beautiful green sprouts out of it. So I said, well, I don't want to waste any more of this nice warm weather. So I'm going to plant them. So I had a, one of those old um, recycling bins that they don't use anymore in Fairfax County. So I decided to plant them in there. And all I, I, I was still had a fear of putting them into wet dirt and putting wet, wet dirt over them and watering them because I was sure they'd go rotten because they'd been so, a couple of times I'd actually cut off the sprouts of the ones from the packet and they'd actually just gone rotten when I planted them. So, and I didn't want to do, you know how we used to put avocados in toothpicks and put them on the, put them in a cup of water. But I discovered a long time ago, you don't even have to do that. You can just put them in the dirt and they'll grow. So I should have been more confident, but I had a huge lack of confidence since last year. It was all done for me. And this year, I wasn't quite sure if I knew what I was doing. So I put some nice dirt on the bottom of the, of the, bear, of the bucket, the bin. And then I laid the sweet potatoes on it, including the store-bought one and the, and the the little useless looking ones that I bought from Home Depot. And uh, then I was a bit wary of putting wet dirt on. So I put a very light mix of dry, dry soil and dry mulch. To, I covered them with that. And then I didn't start to water them until the, until the sprouts decided that they needed some sun and they started to grow above it. So then I started to water them. So, uh, you know, I was very curious. Here we come, time to harvest. And we just did it the, um, just a, a few days ago because I could have left them a bit longer, but I, I needed to take a video for this presentation. So, um, so really you're, you're seeing for the first time what I was seeing then when we started this video, I had no idea what was going to be in there. So I trimmed all the vines off and they went into the compost heap. And then I had a tarp up on the deck, so I just tipped the whole thing out onto the tarp. And who knows what we'll find in here. So here, here, was, the, here was the grand harvesting. It's heavy. That was a bit disappointing. We got some of those potato bugs in there. Peeny. Um. <laughs> it's shaping sometimes. This is a really good one right here. See it. Yes, so I was very proud of that nice big one, but at this stage we still didn't have a clue what was in the middle of the of that big heap of dirt. So um, so then I, I just made one more video so you can see more of it. Oopsie, wrong one, sorry. Um, ah. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. So high tech here. Um, 
one that I had bought from the supermarket that started to grow even better than the seed sweet potatoes. So that was the one that I think became this. So that's not too bad a harvest for three little pieces of sweet potato. It's fun. I mean, you know, you can buy big bags of them at Costco, but it's more fun when you grow it yourself, right? Okay. So, now here's a picture that my dear husband supplied of all kinds of ways, fabulous ways you can use sweet potatoes, fries, and these kind of, um, I forget what you call them, but you probably know. And the, I used to not be a fan of sweet potatoes because it seemed like every time I had them, people served them with marshmallows all over them. But then I discovered just roasting them with with um, just roasting them and like a, or baking them like a baked potato. Oh, I grew to love them. So yeah, they're really, and they're very nutritious. And so they're just a nice thing to have. And this shows a little bit more after I started searching through the, that pile, there was still more. So it was actually not a bad harvest at all. I'm very excited. So now I'm letting them cure for a couple of weeks. Um, that allows the starch time to develop and make some sweeter. And actually I probably could have left them in and they get a little bit sweeter even after it starts to get cold, but you just have to be careful to get them out before, um, before the frost and before the sweet potatoes actually freeze. So thank you so much for watching. Um, how many did you plant again? Well, in the in that packet that I had bought from the from Home Depot, there was probably two two um, little ones, and as well as the big one, bigger one that was on that that was in my fruit bowl, which um, I think is that one. It actually grew bigger, and it sent out a, a whole bunch more from that piece. Um, so really, it wasn't very much. That is amazing. Yeah, I was very thrilled. Um, so next year, I'm totally going to get those um, bags, you know, those big bags that you can put planters. You can move them around. They have handles on them. They're like canvas bags. Yeah. And so you can move them around to your sunny spots. And and because um, I saw a picture, somebody had a picture, and they when they tipped out that one one of those bags, it was just full of sweet potatoes and there was no dirt. Like it had just expanded and, and there was hardly, a, was a lot of roots, but hardly any dirt and lots of big sweet potatoes. So I think next year if I planted them earlier and maybe left them a bit longer, that might work. Karen, I love the way that you organize these slides with, you know, you turning it into a story and with the suspense, it, it, it was wonderful. <laughs> But I, I really enjoyed it. I'm curious, how many hours of sun do you need to grow your sweet potatoes? I think they're like any full sun plant, um, six to eight hours, um, which they would definitely get, they did get out on the deck. Nice sunny deck. Yeah. And you have not eaten them yet, Karen? No, they need, they are apparently, I haven't tried it, but apparently they're not as sweet as they're going to be in a couple of weeks. They say that just to cure them and not to wash them off yet either. Uh -huh. So I've just got them in a box and um, letting them, and then the soil will all dry so I can just brush it off. And once they're cured, I can wash them, which is what I did with the ones last year from the container. Uh, they all came out nice and pretty. Those aren't very pretty right now, but they, they will be. <laughs> I find it very exciting to be, to be able to, um, some of you probably remember Brie, the, um, the foodscaping lady. Oh, um, yes. Actually, we've always done it a bit, but we got extra inspired after her presentation. And Simon had actually ordered a bunch of seeds that she was growing, like sesame and, and uh, sorghum and... What else did we get? I can't remember some, some other things. So we had all that, oh, rice. So we had some rice. <laughs> How did the rice do? 
No, it did never come to fruition. It grew. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful, a beautiful grassy plant, but it was. It looked like lemongrass, but it no, mm -hmm. we never got any fruit on it. So I think it was um, the soil. We didn't use the best soil. We got so excited in the spring, and then we weren't really shopping, so we didn't get any nice bags of Miracle Grow or anything. So we were using some soil that we from our compost that I don't think it was cooked properly yet. <laughs> so, uh, and it didn't have any nutrition in it. But, but um, yeah, next year we'll try it again. Because the sesame did really well and it's a beautiful plant. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Yeah. it did really well. And um, when you open up the seed, it's all these tiny little perfect sesame seeds that you can eat right from the, plant, right from the seed pod. So, and, and Brie says that they, re, they reseed as well. So that's a good suggestion if anyone wants to try sesame. How tall do they grow, Karen? The oh, well, ours were probably up to about our chest level. Oh, wow. Four yeah. feet, three, four feet, wow. Yeah, and her, uh, Brie's were over her head, so. Wow. Yeah. And nobody grew that much. Yeah. Uh, Simon just asked, any thoughts on the difference between growing normal potatoes and sweet potatoes? Oh, I, well, I was afraid he was going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> um, normal potatoes and uh, the difference between what, sorry? Normal, white potatoes probably and sweet potatoes. They're oh, really different well, what, the, the white and yellow, uh, the yellow and um, red potatoes I had planted earlier in the spring. They, they, you can plant them in much colder weather and you can even harvest them. Now, I come from a little place called Prince Edward Island, which we always oh. sit. Oh, I've for. been there. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> we always joke that it stands for potatoes every inch because <laughs> <the sky. Yeah. laughs> they grow a lot of potatoes there. So I was just used to seeing them the farmers put them in, you know, like really early in the year, maybe April. And then they would harvest them in the beginning of September. So when I started researching and doing it myself, I felt kind of ashamed because I'm from PEI. I should know how to grow potatoes, but I don't. <laughs> so um, I found out that here in this climate, you can put them in um, when it's, you know, really still quite cool. And then uh, supposedly you harvest them as soon as you, as the flowers appear. I always thought you had to wait for them to go brown. And um, so I did do some. And the problem is I had, I had planted that packet into that recycling bin before I used it for sweet potatoes. So I took them all out and transplanted them into the garden. And I think what happened, and I put a few in pots too, like I had done with, with sweet potatoes last year put a few in with the flowers. So just the other day we were cleaning out pots and we found a few leftover potatoes that were still in there that we didn't realize. And a couple of them were sprouting. So I actually planted them out into the garden because um, supposedly you can, you can leave them in there all winter long as long as you mulch them up nice, really well. Hmm. So I've done that. So we'll see what happens next spring. And um, so, yeah, they didn't, um, they didn't do terribly well. They did, I did get oh, probably a bowl full out of, um, no, no, I don't even know. I can't remember, but there weren't that many. There was probably nine or nine seedlings, sprouted ones. And so I got a, quite a few, but not very big, but you know, they were good. So really, I, I guess I can't really answer that question because I don't, all I know is that normal potatoes can take colder weather and sweet potatoes need warmth. So, does that answer your question, dear? <laughs> That's sort of- Karen. Karen, what was that store in Arlington that you went to? Oh, Ayers Hardware, it's at Westover. Ayers. There's Washington Boulevard. It's a sort of place, it's like a little old fashioned general store. Um, but they always put out big racks of plants in the spring. And, um, and so if you just, I mean, they're mo way more expensive, but like if you just want a, a little packet of um, 
some sort of flower just to put in your in your hanging plants or something like that. I get a lot of stuff from them. Plus they, they have yeah. everything else you ever want to. Like, <laughs> I, I remember I went there once with a list of things and um, there was one thing it was, and toilet paper was on it. And I it got to the end, I could not find any toilet paper. And so when I got up to the desk, she said, any, did you find everything you were looking for? And I said, no, as a matter of fact, I couldn't find any toilet paper. And so she took me back and showed me that it was up on a higher shelf, but there was loads of it. <laughs> so I said, oh, here you go. <laughs> yeah, I love that place. It's on Washington Boulevard, just, just yeah. um, pretty close to um, East Falls Church. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Last week, I was just going to mention about potatoes. Last week, we had a question about uh, red Norland potatoes, uh, when to harvest them. Um, and I discovered you're supposed to start when they start to die back. Of course, uh, they were developed in Nebraska. So that would speak to them growing in a colder climate. And you think of sweet potatoes as being a more Southern food. So I think you're right about them needing the warmer weather. Mm, yeah. You know, botanically, they're not related. Right. You know, the white potato is a, a nightshade, and I believe, I'd have to make it look it up, but I believe it is a stem, actually. Um, one of those plants that has an altered stem, mm -hmm. whereas the sweet potato is a true root, and it's related to like bindweed, and I know in Europe you'll see those um, buildings and they're covered with the purple flowers, mm. and they're all related. Yeah, that's right. I did read that too. An imp I think it's Ipanema. Um, I didn't know that, Yvonne. That's that's incredible. So the 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 white potato and the sweet potato are not related. No, not at all. The white wow. potato, I think, is Solanium Sola, uh, the botanical name, the genus. Huh. It's a member of the nightshades. Uh, yeah. I know my daughter keeps chickens, and it's funny, you can give them sweet potatoes, but you cannot give them white potatoes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the night and I said that you give them tomatoes, what's the difference? They're all nightshade. Yeah. But she said there's something about the white potatoes, but they are, I'm almost sure they're a mod uh, modified stem, if I remember, because you see all the little eyes on them, and I think that's like Oh, I've forgotten. I've forgotten. It's a botany thing, but I don't remember. I guess it's like, you know, when if you have a white potato that's got green on it, they tell you you shouldn't eat that part because it's toxic. Yeah. Let's see. White potato. I'll look it up. I'm big <laughs> on this. I love. Nah. I'm almost sure it's a stem. But. Um. It belongs to the Morning Glory family, it says in Wikipedia. Which one? Sweet the, the sweet, uh, potato. sweet potato does. Oh. And I can never pronounce this. It's a dicotyledon. Thank you. I <laughs> talk biology. That was a that was one of our words. I know. <laughs> I've been practicing, but I haven't used it for a while. So, ah, <laughs> uh, was a yes. Know? I just found it. Believe it or not, the potato is actually a stem. Yes. Okay. So for the first time ever, I um the the pots where I had planted some potatoes mm -hmm. were growing nightshade as well as potatoes. Really. And. Uh, well, no, this is not related, but out in the, in the front of our garden where the sweet potatoes were nowhere near there, a, wild, a morning glory vine has started growing and we mm -hmm. never planted one. So isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. yeah. we morning glory for the first time and we had nightshade weed. I mean, the weed part of the plant. Was it one of the band weeds? Um, it was, yeah, with a little white, with a little, be it gets little green berries on it. I don't know about the berries, but they have white flowers. Yes, I they think. will twine around all the plants. Oh no, it yeah. wasn't. No, it wasn't. 
wasn't one of those. The night oh, that's good. Yeah. I have those back in the very back of my yard okay. next to some uh, parkland, and it will just bind up everything. I know. Apparently. Well, but it's also part have... of the Morning Glory family, too. Right, right. Yeah. I wonder also whether deer don't like eating things that are on vine, don't like vines as well. So whether a sweet potato growing in your garden may be less susceptible to deer being eaten. We went out to Middleburg a year or two ago and they had planted uh, a lot of sweet potatoes, just put them on the ground actually, and the vines had grown, making a really nice summer ground cover um, mm. and seemingly hadn't been eaten. I don't know whether deer do or don't like vines, but they seem to perhaps to weather better than other things. My deer do like potato vines. Oh, do they? Okay. Yes, if you <laughs> plant them, like if you plant it in a pot so it fill, you know, spells over, they will come up on your porch and, wow. and eat them. Oh, man. Yvonne's deer like everything. They do, including <laughs> okra. <laughs> not the not the actual fruit of the okra. Though. Not the fruit of the okra, but they do like the plant. <laughs> so Karen, you have to you have to let um, the master gardener people know that you're going to do this again because you you've got a great presentation here. You could also do it as a garden talk. You know that's what, yes, uh, right. One of the other things, and Mary Lou, what's Mary Lou's last name? Walls. Mary Lou Walls, I think, is the one who's been coordinating that, but. You have to do it again because I mean I know we're a captive audience here, but you've got a wonderful presentation. So Jane, are you from Green Springs? I am, yeah. Oh, okay. I think it is uh Lizzie um gosh, what's Lizzie's last name? Liz. <sighs> Her name escapes me. <laughs> uh I don't live anywhere near Green Spring. I just happened in on that one, but if you haven't been out there, oh my goodness, everything is in bloom. It's just, Aww. I was just so amazed that things could be so colorful in October and it, it's everywhere you look, it's just beautiful, so. We live near there. Actually, Tim, Tim, um, he was our mentor for Ready, Set, Grow that we didn't get to do this year. Yeah. Uh, Tim, oh, Simon, can you remember his name? Anyway, it was really nice. We had everything all ready to go. And then we even had our date set for going into the classroom. <laughs> I've been working with um, the Children's Ed program, which is a Green Spring thing. Right. And that's been wonderful because the, stu the students in Fairfax, for example, have an independent day on Mondays. Mm -hmm. And um, I've never presented. I'm just an assistant because I'm just an intern. Um, but the programs are interactive and you know informative, and of course the kids love it, and they always take them on a little hike. Mm -hmm. It's um, mostly parents who are there. It's, it, usually it's field trips, but of course no field trips this year. Yeah, but it's parents who are um, either homeschooling or looking for something really fun and informative for their kids to do on Mondays. Uh, so that's I, I mean if you, if you want if you wanted to get involved in the children's ed program that is still going on and my understanding is it will continue through the winter. They'll oh. it, right now it's in the children's garden it's all outside. Right. Everybody wears their little masks and stuff but um, they'll do it inside and just make sure they have you know 6 feet in between each of the chairs. My kids uh, are the kids from our school. I've been on field trips to Green Springs for the, with the kids. It, it is a fantastic program. I love it. Uh, this was my first introduction and I was like, oh my gosh, what a great, what a great resource for parents. This, it is. This yeah. semester. So if you know any parents who are going nuts on Mondays, let them know about it. And also, I don't know if I should broadcast this, but I don't even know if they're collecting fees because apparently they haven't figured out how to do that with COVID and everything. So it's oh. a free program and they're very well organized. Yeah, well, I'm a member. So they've been sending, um, they've been sending plant lists and I've gone into the plant list and everything sold. So yeah. <laughs> there's a couple of things I wanted to pick up. They were just doing drag that, they'll put it in your trunk. So you could pay online and they'll just put it in the trunk of your car. So they figured that out anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I think they figured out how to get the membership fees. <laughs> 
Uh, things on Green Springs, uh, our mentor was a guy called Tim Bow Bow Bowers. B -O -W. Bowers. Bowers or Bowers. And, and yeah, Green Springs is a we're close to Green Springs. It's a fabulous resource. Thanks for thanks, Jane, for the hint of going there now. We often go in early spring, and it's actually magical in early spring too. They have an incredible array of witch hazels, which are all blooming, and very early in the spring, they just have fabulous. Yeah, smell. usually like February. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. And Absolutely. they're beautiful. Yeah. yeah, starting with the the hellebores, and then yeah, and it's just nonstop. And now it it will be beautiful there in the fall. I haven't been over yet lately. Yeah. Go. Yeah, it's worth a trip. It's they have a lot trip. of the asters that are blooming now, I think. Yes. They do. And I'm all shade. My my whole thing is shade and deer resistant. And uh, so I go to the parts where they have the shade gardens and they've got their hardy begonias and their anemones. And I mean, it, it, there's color everywhere. And you're just like, oh my gosh, how do they do that at this time of year? But it is lovely. Especially with deer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's another nice one, Bluemont. Well, you know where the do you know the there's a rose garden in Arlington? I think yes, I do know about that rose there's, garden. And it's incredible, shade, right? right? There's a shade garden nearby there too, which I used to go to for ideas. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 You can do a really nice walk. You can walk all through the park. You go under. I think it's Washington Boulevard. There's a a uh, walkway underneath Washington Boulevard and you can just walk. It's hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, really good nice. too. that's another thing we can do. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is so nice to see all of you. I don't know. I have written both Adria and um, Ann Mason and shared our experiences. Anne had texted me and asked me if you got in, Chris. And I said, yes, she did. <laughs> so I don't know. This is going to be interesting. So did you notice in um, Tori's email that had the wrong link on it? She also said Anne, something about Anne. Yes, and I saw that. And I didn't pay. To be honest with you, I just saw the link. And I thought, okay, mm. it's a link. Yeah. But she had sent me another link. We have a Virginia, you know, there are three of us or three or four of us that have Virginia Tech accounts. Uh -huh. And so I went into that email and this is, she said, here's your link to start the meeting. So I thought, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I started the meeting. And then when no one came, I thought, that is really strange. So I went back to the message that had the Ann and the whatever in it. And I clicked on that. But that didn't. It just said I had to sign in with my something SSO account. Oh, but you would get a different one from us because we don't have accounts. Correct. Well, I here's what I think happened. I think Tori was setting them up mm -hmm. and she set up this one, but she copied the wrong uh, yeah. information right. mm -hmm. yeah. into it, the it, one it, that she right. sent all of us. Right. So when I went back and I thought, well, number doesn't look like my other one so I looked at the number here and I thought well no that one is 829 and this one's 867 yeah, yeah so then I thought oh my gosh or maybe this one's 829 the other one was 867 so that was when and then I saw you were get sending messages to each other and I thought whoa wait a minute uh -huh. yeah. so it was just kind of crazy so I'm not sure exactly what happened other than I think there were two meetings and unfortunately I bet she sent the meeting information that she sent the group of us to the participants mm -hmm. mm. maybe but we had a great meeting yeah it was fun <laughs> it was really fun but I will tell them tomorrow that we should redo this one because it was very good yeah, it was. And I liked hearing about your potatoes. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought I was going to delete that now. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't delete yet. I better don't, keep it. Oh. Don't delete yet. Well, I guess we did have one participant, Simon. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah. He, he, um, he was very helpful in putting that presentation together because he knows how to do video presentations. And I was saying, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. 
yes, he said, we've got to make it, put a photo in here. No, you can't do that. So he said, will you trust me? I said, okay. Well, it turned out wonderful. Yeah, thanks. So thank you. I don't, do you think we need to do anything else? Anybody? No. Uh, the last one I was in participating in, we, I think we finished at around 20 to 8. So we've gone a bit later on this one. Cool. Well, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was good. Very good. And we learned a yeah. lot. Thank you, Karen. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you guys for all being so Thank you. Thank you. Well, was, I appreciate all of you coming. And uh, I have to say, I worked with Jane like what? Oh, we don't have to say how many years ago. We just, we just, <laughs> so it was kind of a surprise to see her tonight. Well, uh, it was wonderful to see you, Yvonne. It was excellent. So I still see Lillian too. So. I'll tell her we all said hello. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for coming, and um, I will let them know how this happened. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, you. Good night. Good night. Good night. and you guys have a nice evening. All right. Bye bye. 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 bye.